This train terminates at Kennington via Charing Cross. Charing Cross is an area of London just south of Trafalgar Square at the western end of the Strand. Each part of its name, Charing and Cross, has a separate story behind it. Charing comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word that literally means bend, relating to the fact that the small settlement that existed here in medieval times stood on the bend of the River Thames. The cross part of the name refers to a stone monument that had a cross at its top, and this monument was set up here in the hamlet of Charing around the years 1291 to 1294. After the cross monument was put up, the area started being called Charing Cross instead of Charing. But why was this monument put here? Turns out that at the same time that this monument was put in Charing, 11 similar looking monuments were also put up in 11 other locations in Eastern England, and all were put up for the same purpose. The meaning behind these 12 monuments goes all the way back to the medieval king and queen, King Edward I and his wife Eleanor of Castile. Edward and Eleanor married young, and although initially their marriage was arranged because it made political sense, the history books tell us that their relationship was a particularly happy and loving one. Back in those days, it was very common for kings to have affairs, but King Edward was unusual in his devotion to Eleanor and that it seems that he was faithful to her throughout their marriage. Records indicate that they were so happy together that they were rarely apart, and Eleanor often accompanied Edward on his kingly duties. One of the more famous stories about Eleanor's devotion to her husband was when Edward was wounded by an assassin's poisoned dagger and Eleanor took it upon herself to suck the poison from the wound, and she nursed him back to health. Edward and Eleanor also had 16 pregnancies together. Eleanor appears to have been a healthy woman, though after the birth of her last child, it seems her health became more fragile. And a few years after her final pregnancy, in 1290, aged 47, she passed away from ill health. Just before Eleanor passed away, she was in the middle of a tour of her properties in Northern England, and was in Nottinghamshire near Lincoln at the time of her death. Her body was transported for a royal burial in Westminster Abbey in London, and in medieval times, long before cars and fast trains, this distance from Nottinghamshire to London took a long time. The 140-mile journey took almost two weeks. King Edward wanted to honour his wife's memory, and decided that a good way to do this would be to build a monument that had a statue of Eleanor on it, and was topped with a cross, and he requested that a monument would be placed wherever Eleanor's body rested on the overnight rest stops on this journey back to London. When the monuments were made, they featured Eleanor's shields, sculptures of her, and they had a cross on top. These monuments became known as Eleanor Crosses. Charing was where the final Eleanor Cross was erected, and was the final resting stop before they reached the end point of the journey in Westminster Abbey. Although 12 Eleanor crosses were made originally, a lot of the original Eleanor crosses disappeared over time for various reasons. Some were taken down during the English Civil War in the mid-1600s, when Oliver Cromwell led a revolt against the monarchy. During this time, many monuments dedicated to kings and queens were destroyed. Only three of the original Eleanor crosses have survived to this day, the ones at Geddington, Ardingston, and Waltham. The one in Charing Cross was destroyed in 1647 during the Civil War, but the name Charing Cross stuck. Over 200 years after the destruction of the Charing Cross Eleanor Cross, Charing Cross Railway Station opened, and to celebrate the opening of the station and of the new Charing Cross Hotel, in 1865, an ornate replica of the original Eleanor Cross was put up outside Charing Cross Station. This replica still stands outside the Charing Cross Station today. This wasn't the exact spot of the original Eleanor Cross though. The original spot was here, where this statue of Charles I stands today. There's an interesting story about the sculpture. It was first made in 1639, when Charles I was king, 
But anyone who is familiar with British history will know that Charles I was the unfortunate king who reigned when the English Civil War broke out. At that time, there was a lot of fighting between the anti-royalists and the royalists, and anything which represented the royal family at the time was at risk of being destroyed. King Charles and his statue had much of the public vying for them both to be taken down. The statue was removed and was taken in by a bronze maker. For some reason, maybe because he admired the craftsmanship of a fellow bronze maker, he kept the bronze statue, but he hid it well so as not to anger the anti-royalists around. Meanwhile, he told the anti-royalist public that he'd melted down the statue to make new bronze things, and he sold bronze things like knives and forks, which he deviously marketed as being made out of Charles I's statue to boost sales amongst the people who wanted a souvenir from the triumphant takedown of the king. Several years after the Civil War ended, when the royal family was safely accepted again by the public, the statue was rediscovered, intact, and was put up again around 1674. It stayed here in Charing Cross since then and to this day. Fun fact, this exact spot where the statue is, is also the spot from where mileage distances to London on road signs are calculated. Also, if you type London into Google Maps and zoom in, you'll see that this is the spot that's tagged as London. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about the history of Charing Cross. Bye guys!